how do we go about getting more meaning in our lives? Well, I'm going to put forward three kind of ways that I feel we can get more meaning into our lives, kind of based on the science and based on my own experience dealing with clients. So I suppose the point to make about this is this cannot be comprehensive, that there is many, many, many different ways of having meaning and purpose in your life. But I think these are three important ways that we can. So firstly, I'm going to suggest that we can find meaning by acting in line with what's important. We can find meaning by facing our challenges and we can find meaning in the individual moral choices and actions that we take on a day to day basis. So I'm going to jump right into it. The first thing I'm going to talk about is finding meaning by defining what's really important to us and acting in line with this. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. I'd like you to put your answers into the chat box if that's OK. At the very least, I want you to write down the answers to this question because we're going to come back to it a little bit later. So if I could ask you guys, what are the three most important things for you in the world right now? So I suppose I'll use an example from my own life just to kind of show you what I mean. So for me, the three most important things for me in the world right now are my business. I've just kind of started this recently, so it's very important to me. My sense of creativity. If I'm not doing something creative in my day to day, I tend to get very bored and listless if I'm not building something. Finally, my family and partner, which I suppose I class as one thing. And they're, I suppose, important to me for obvious reasons. You can see how they're very much related to those kind of three factors of um, intrinsic motivation, you know, or need to be autonomous or need to be connected and or need to be competent or need to be good at things. Okay. So another way of thinking about what's really important to us in our life is what's called values. And I, I think some of the examples you guys kind of put up to me there are very much linked to values. And so what's a value? A value is like a belief or a rule or an attitude about what's really important. And they're also kind of a moral compass to, to help us decide, you know, what's right and what's wrong. You know? So we tend to have values in kind of four key areas. We tend to have values around or we tend to think about what's important in terms of what we want for ourselves. So maybe these are things like wealth or health or security. And so I suppose I'm using examples here, but th these only kind of touch on things that we might want for ourselves. I'm, I'm going to talk about some more kind of different areas we have values in as well. But I suppose the point is, is I suppose it's almost limitless or we can at least have tens or hundreds of different values. A second area we tend to have strong values in is about what it is that we want to become. So maybe growth is important to you, maybe ambition is important to you, or maybe wisdom is important to you. A third area we tend to have very strong values around is what it is that we want from others. So maybe connection is very important to us. Maybe respect is more important, or maybe privacy is very important to us. And finally, we tend to have very strong values about what it is that we want from society. So maybe it's tolerance, maybe it's freedom, maybe it's equality. And I think I suppose a lot of the major world events in the last couple of years, whether it's the marriage equality thing, which you know would show that kind of a lot of people want tolerance in society, or I suppose the, the, the protests in Hong Kong, which show kind of freedom is very, very important to people, or at the protests in America around George Floyd show that equality is very important to people. I suppose an interesting point about values is there's often a hierarchy to them that I suppose when push comes to shove, often one thing can be more important to another, and this often kind of drives our behavior and what we do. So for example, you know, your wealth and your health might be both important to you, but I suppose, you know, if you work maybe 80 hours a week uh, in order to make a lot of money, that might kind of show to you that at the moment anyway, that maybe your wealth is more important to you than your health. And this is the interesting thing about values is often they're very unconscious to us. And it's only when they start to come into conflict and things like this, that, that we become much more aware of them. And often a way that we can kind of notice when they come into conflict is we tend to feel emotions, often negative emotion. So values are very much linked to uh, emotions. We tend to feel positive emotions when the world and ourselves live in line with our values. And we tend to feel negative emotions when the world and ourselves don't live in line with our values. So for example, if wealth is very important to you and you happen to come across or make a lot of money, then you're probably going to feel very satisfied, content, happy, you're going to feel positive emotion. Whereas if wealth is important to you and you end up losing a load of money for some reason, maybe the stock market plunge that's happened recently because of COVID, then you're liable to feel maybe sad or angry because, you know, if wealth is important to you and you lose it, um, then you're going to feel those negative emotions. So the, the fact that emotions are very much linked to our values, it can really help us in terms of putting our finger on what's really, really important to us. So one thing I'll often do with clients in terms of figuring out what's really important or what their values are, is we have a look at kind of peak emotional moments. So we might have a look at you know, when someone was most satisfied or when they were most proud or when they were most content. So when I think of an example from my own life, 
uh, recently in the last couple of years is I was at a wedding and I suppose at the wedding I was connected with a lot of very good people a lot of very good friends people were doing very nice things for each other and I suppose that would suggest to me that connection is kind of a key value or something that's very important to me another emotion that's very important in terms of putting our finger on our values is anger you know what really pisses us off what really makes us angry so when I think of myself when I think of a moment in my life when I was very very angry I was working a job a few years ago and I felt I was being treated very unfairly and that made me very very angry to the point that I left the job and that would suggest that I suppose fairness is a very important value. Another way of putting our finger on what our values are is you have to think in your life, you know, what are your must-haves? What are the things you have to have in your day to day? And so if I'm not building something or if I'm not doing something creative, I tend to get very bored and listless in my work. And so that would suggest to me that creativity is very important.